Let's learn how a container works in Visual Studio, Windows Forms, GUI. So I'm going to create a brand new file, new project, and we'll do the Windows Forms, and let's call it Contain Me. Click OK, and it creates our project for us. Here's the form that we're used to seeing. I'm going to go ahead and change the form name to be FRM Main, and if you don't know how to do this, please go watch the other videos. I'm going to go change the title to be welcome, dot, dot, dot. And then before, I just put a button on there. But this time, I actually want to put what they call um, a container. And here's our containers right here. If you scroll down, in fact, we can minimize both of those. Here's one called containers. And one of them is called a panel. I'm going to drag the panel and let go. And this panel, I'll drag it up here to the top, and I'll resize that panel. This panel is going to act like a container. And if you look at the properties for that panel, we have a border style, which border style right now is none. But before I explain those attributes, let's go ahead and drop a button on there. Click on Common Controls, put a button, and put it in the panel. And I'll resize it so it's a little bit bigger. Go change the text of your button to be close and the name of the button to be BTN close. Now watch what happens when I run this. I take a look at that and I can see the button there. I don't really see anything at all. It's not exciting whatsoever. But when I come back to my program and I click on that panel, I highlight it and then I click on this X. As I move the panel, the button moves with it. And that's because the panel now owns the button. It is the container to that button. So as I move the panel, the button moves with it. Let's go look at some of the attributes now for that panel. First of all, the name. I'm going to give it a name, PNL Top, or Panel Top. Uh, back color. Maybe we want that to be a different color, that little panel area. I could change it to be maybe a solid gray and border style. Right now it's none. I could make that a single border. And other things that I can do in there, uh, I can lock that into place, true, so it doesn't move anywhere else. I can't move it around until I unlock it. That allow, that uh, helps me, prevents me from making a mistake, dragging it somewhere. And we don't want it to be a tab stop, so that if I press the tab key it stops there. So now let's go ahead and run it and see what that panel does for us. And now there's the panel. So that panel acts as a container for the close button. Now what's the big deal? Why would you ever want to use this? Well, panels allow us to break up our form and make them look nicer. They allow us to organize things by commonality. In fact, right now it's locked. Let's go back to our panel locked false so that I can resize things. I'm going to pull it back just a little bit. I could drop another panel on there by going down to my containers panel, put that panel uh, right here and I could make it you know look nice. I could actually drag it anywhere I want and make it bigger and once again I could put a border on it so I could see it border style single and I could drop another panel on this form and put it wherever I want and I could put things that are common in there and that just acts as a container. Another container that we have that we can work with is a group box. I'm going to drop a group box there. Now a group box is also a container but the difference is the group box actually has a title associated with it. See that text? That's sort of like the title of the box. And so I could put something like gender. And this group box now acts as a holder for other objects. I could come back up here to common controls and I could put a radio button in there and I could put another radio button in there and the first radio button I could say the text is male, and I could give it 
a name of RB male and the second radial button I could give it a name of RB female and I could change its text to be female and so now my gender group box owns those other two objects and so anytime I move the group box those two objects will go with it and if I have that radial button we want that to be what they call mutually exclusive now how does that work let's go ahead and run this and see what happens there's my panel there's my group box there's male there's female and just by putting those inside of the same group box they've now become mutually exclusive meaning you can only click on one radio button at a time within that group box that means if I came out to my form and I put another radio button out there and I ran it one more time notice it is not part of that group box I can have both of them selected now because this one is not owned by a container so by adding radio buttons to a container we can make them mutually exclusive another thing with the radio button that you might want to look at besides the name attribute is there's an attribute called checked currently it's false now it's true so that actually will put a default circle what if I came to female and I said that its attribute for checked was also true once again since they're owned by the group box they're mutually exclusive only one can be checked at one time so I'd uh, recommend you go take a look at the radio button if you notice most of these attributes we've already looked at we've learned they're all common from looking at buttons or looking at panels or looking at forms the other thing that we can do is that radio button has um, some events associated with it we have a click event and we have the checked change the checked change event says you fire off that method whatever you want to write whenever the checked property changes value well let's try something let's go ahead and add a method for check change I'll double click on it and it creates our new method and let's say this dot text remember this refers to the form because I'm in the form class this dot text is equal to something what do we want it to be equal to if rb mail dot checked equal true and I don't have to say equal equal true because by default it's already a boolean but I like to do it then I'm going to go ahead and say that the text is equal to rb mail oops rb mail dot text curly brace else this dot text is equal to rb female dot text so anytime I change that checked radio button if it's checked then we're going to change the form title to be whatever the radio button for mail says otherwise we'll change it to be female this is how an event handler works for a radio button let's go try it out and see what happens okay let's change it to mail we change it to mail female change it to female mail female and that's because we're calling the event handler for that radio button and the radio button if you want to work with it not only has that event check change but it also has an attribute or a property called checked which is important for us because we know whether or not that radio button has been checked and if you put multiple radio buttons in one group box then the group box make sure that they are mutually exclusive so that only one of them can be checked and that's how panels group box and radio buttons work by the way if you wanted to go ahead and add the close method for that close button double click this dot close parenthesis parenthesis so now if you run it if you ever click on that close button it closes the form